Hello and welcome to today's LOL Sports Roundup. We're going to cover a couple teams that made some moves over the last day or so. Uh, DRX and TL. Usually I don't do a video over just two teams, but you know, these are two pretty important teams. Uh, one being the world champion from last year and the other being um, one of the biggest disappointments. And there's a connection between the two. So, um, DRX, everybody but Barrel's gone. But Barrel is the um, the key, right? Three in a row, Barrel's been to finals or, or, or won or, or whatever you want to want to say. Um, well, yeah, been to finals. Um, so, he is the dynasty, right? So, I guess DRX are making a run again next year with Rascal, Croco, Fate, and Duckdown. Who would have guessed it, right? Start putting your bets in now. Your futures, legally, put your futures in DRX. They got the barrel factor. I know I don't have them listed here. That's because he was re-signed. I don't talk about re-signings. So, Rascal, 344 KDA, 824 CS per minute, 63.8 KP. Rascal is one of the best top laners in the world. One of the best top laners in Korea. He's a little older now. 25 years old this season. Um, but, he still is very, very talented. He is what he is. This is definitely, pro well, this probably is the best roster um, out of all the Misfits that weren't signed so far. I mean, you could argue Teddy over Duck Dom. Ruler's probably going to the LPL, so we're not going to pretend like he would go here. But really, I don't think um, DRX could have gotten any better. Rascal, 19.8 kill share, 21.6 gold share, 9 champions of 45 games um, with KT. It, it's kind of funny when you really think about it that this team is in a position where they had to let everybody go because they couldn't pay them, right, except Barrel. And yet, they still landed people like Rascal and Duckdown, which you know weren't cheap. Now, are they as much as Zekka, probably? No. But I would argue Rascal's probably worth more than any of the other players on DRX that they lost. Um, and and Duckdown probably cost just as much as the others as well. I doubt Kingen should have... Kingen should not have cost that much. Pioshek probably did, but we'll get into that. Um, and uh, Deft, at this point in his career, he shouldn't be a small fortune. So um, it's it's definitely... Uh, I don't think they're saving as much money as, as I think with this roster. Now, where it has problems is definitely jungle mid. So Croco, 376 KDA, 535 CS per minute, 70.6 KP. About average from summer the the meta did not really fit a five and a half cs per minute i dropped my standards down to five two five seventy percent you still should be able to get into fights make things happen but you might not be able to farm as much farm isn't as important with the champions you're playing he just is the epitome of average sometimes he has good moments sometimes he has bad moments all intents and purposes he's like a five out of ten i really am not a a big fan of Krako. That is going to be a problem for this team. Pioshek, obviously very inconsistent. Like I said, we'll get into that. Um, but uh, Krako, a worse Pioshek in that way. 18-6 kill share, 18-3 gold share, 8 champions in 41 games with Sandbox. So did end up going on a run last year, trying to care, I mean, trying to do work. But Prince was all that Sandbox really had. Um, 23 years old as well, so we know this player is what he is. Um, Fate in mid played with the Freaks last year, Kwang Gong. Uh, also 23 years old next year. People might say, oh, they're 23 now. Next season, at some point, they'll be turning 23. So that's the age I have listed here. Um, 401 KDA, 871 CS per minute, 71, 9 KP. Fate is above average. Now, alongside Krako, I don't think... Fate's going to be any better than he did last year with the Freaks alongside LM. I think it's just, it, it is what it is. At this point in his career, uh, maybe he can be unleashed a bit more on a different team. But I, I really don't think Fate is, um, you know, at a Zekka level or a Chovy or a Showmaker or even a Faker. He is like, you know, around where BDD is right now. Closer. Uh, Lava's gone. But, um. You know, that's kind of where he is. 871, though, is very good. Compared to literally all the Western... Um, compared to Western mid laners, Fate would probably be one of the best. Um, just based on how well he lanes. 20.1 um, 
kill share 22 four gold share 10 champions of 42 games um definitely more of a, a a utility player secondary player um with with those numbers i believe his azir and ari went one and eleven last year thank god that meta might be gone for him right because one and eleven that's that's pretty bad um duck dom 517 kda 886 cs per minute 68 4 kp these numbers at worlds 31 kill share 24 for gold share five champions in 12 games at worlds and 23 years old duck dom is very talented on the aphelios otherwise a little sus that's why his numbers are 886 so really even the aphelios numbers are only nine you really think about the players that he played at worlds um you know it was hope and missing flacket and targamas and Kauri and vulcan those numbers should probably be stronger i understand he played a best of five against gen g but let's be real um these numbers need to be better um duck Tom's obviously been around the block he's 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 you know he's good I wouldn't say he's great, but he's good. I think I said this in the Discord when I heard this this morning or yesterday. I said, you know, this team has two great players, Rascal and Barrel, a good player in Duck Dom, and then two meh players in Krakow and Fate. And that's pretty much going to keep them from being at the level of T1, DRX, um, HLE, you know, uh, even to a lesser degree, maybe even KT. You know, like really, I don't think DRX are, are at that level. They're in that middle middle group um alongside where gen g is right now and gen g with chovy could really like go off but that's where i have this team um micro is the coach he went 34 and 38 um as part of the sandbox coaching staff the last two years before that worked with Don Juan kia so he has been around um good organizations in the past but i'm not really he wasn't like one of the the top dogs with Don Juan Kia, I believe, at the time. So I'm only including the sandbox record here. So uh, we'll see how he does because everybody in DRX, includes, including their coaching staff, is gone. Very weird for a team that doesn't that won worlds. Literally, the only player they kept is Barrel. Uh, team Liquid. So Liquid announced the rest of their roster. We had heard about the all Korean speaking roster. Um, I've made this mistake and I'm trying to correct myself every time I do this, that this is not a Korean roster. It's a Korean speaking roster. There is a difference. Harry is an Australian individual. Um, I, I believe in Yeon is, is a North American individual or vice versa. It, they're not, you know, their, their residency is, is not Korea. So this is not a Korean roster. This is a Korean speaking roster. Um, however, the two two of the three Korean-born players, at least to my knowledge, on the team are Summit and Pyoshik, who they who they brought in. So Summit played with C9 in spring, won MVP, um, left, not really up to him. C9 moved on from him, but they kept him in contract prison. Did not let him play with another NA organization. There are rumors that TSM wanted him. He wanted to go to TSM. Cloud9 said no. That is why contract prison is a bunch of bogus. I think that is absolutely unacceptable that they made him have to go to another country and play in China. I think that that is embarrassing on the org for, for forcing that situation. Um, so Summit, 323 KDA, 848 CS per minute, 60.4 KP. One of the better carry oriented uh, top laners that um, you'll see. Not, you know, like he's not top 10 in the world overall but when it comes to playing carries i think that he is very talented obviously dominates western top laners he's gonna be 24 years old next year um let's see if he learned how to play against malphite 21 5 kill share 22 2 gold share nine champions in 24 games um the malphite was a situation that teams just started playing like malphites gragas and and orn and things like that into him in top lane at the end of spring because they're like well we're not going to beat his jace we're not going to beat him on carries we're going to play things that have relevance in the mid to late game that he also cannot dominate and and that worked and kind of tilted him at times um pioshik so the drx world champion jungler pioshik is going to play for tl all throughout this time, it was empty. People were talking about. I see that they even signed Arthur from Chief to be their um, academy jungler. And I was like, you know, honestly, I don't think their team, I don't think Umpty is going to make this team good. I'm not a big Umpty fan. I'm, I'm not a big Fred Brian fan. I say that every video. 
um on fleek even another korean jungler i thought was kind of the uh, might as well not even bother but pyoshik was the best that was available um 548 kda 546 P cs permit 68 kp 18 8 kill share 18 3 gold share eight champions in 20 games at worlds it's a big deal right world champion his kindred coming out big literally what made him what made him the kindred he was able to pull out in a big way you compare that to Krakow's numbers. Pioshik's numbers are stronger than Krakow's at the highest level of play you can possibly play. So, um, the gap here is pretty massive, and that's why I said throughout with DRX making their roster of the LCK misfits that weren't getting signed. I was like, without Pioshik, the team's a little sus. And I'm not even, like, super high. I mean, I think Pioshik on carries is good. We saw that at Worlds. But there are points where he gets a little lazy. I myself even noticed that he wasn't smiting his drakes and things like that when he felt comfortable. He got a little lazy. And I guarantee T1 saw that as well. And that is why Guma continued to try and steal objectives and successfully. Because it just was part of Pioshek that, I mean, he was just in a situation where he would get a little lazy, a little comfortable and complacent. Oh, it's 5v2. They're not going to try and steal this or take this. So I'm just not even going to smite it. I'm going to get lazy with it. And it would get stolen. And that was literally like the story of finals. Pioshek came, like, he won worlds. He's a world champion jungler. But if they had lost, Pioshek was going to be the reason why. Honestly. And um, going into, into, into worlds... They had brought in Juhan. Juhan was playing a little bit in summer, playing a little bit in playoffs, and even in play-ins he was playing. And I was like, Juhan is not as good as Pioshek. I understand that you're going back and forth, but Pioshek is, is better than him. And lo and behold, they let Pioshek go. Juhan's going to block, uh, back up Krakow now. Uh, I mean, I guess Krakow is better than Juhan, but I honestly, Juhan could catch up. Um, so... That's the deal. So we got Summit, Pioshek, Harry, Ian, Core JJ, all run by Mitt Marin, who is going to be a first time head coach, uh, former um, world champion. So there are world champions all over the place with TL. Uh, we'll see if the, you know, they're hoping that with KR comms and maybe even installing a Korean mentality with so many people from Korea on the team that everybody kind of gets on board and it becomes a really, um, you know, a really hardworking, honest team, I guess you could say. Um, I guess this is going to be a, a real big moment um, to kind of prove if, like, everyone gives the, 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 the players a lot of crap in North America um, because they don't try as hard as Eastern teams and this and that. And uh, I feel like if TL is going to do this, this is, this is the experiment, right? Can a Eastern mentality team like through and through somehow some way get it done in north america can it prove that the eastern mentality is the one and it was always just the mentality not the players you know we're gonna figure it out so um comment down below what do you think of this drx roster what do you think of the tl roster like the video if you like it subscribe to the channel for daily league of legends content if there are no moves tomorrow i'm thinking maybe to do a roundup of all the players from the four major regions like that started last year that are in minor regions that have been signed already, you know, like Jose Diodo, uh, Lava, um, a few others who may go over that. Um, so thank you for watching. Like I said, hope you come back for more content. Uh, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube member, and thank you for watching a third time.